Hi, my name is Diane, and I'm honored today to be with clinical psychologist and depression expert, Dr. Michael Yapko, to talk about his new book, Depression is Contagious. Thanks for being here, Dr. Yapko. Pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about this new book and what people should know about it? Well, this book is the product of 30 years of clinical experience in working with depressed individuals, couples, families, and it's the product of a great deal of research that comes from many different disciplines, from genetics to epidemiology to clinical psychology. And what we have learned is that while the emphasis has historically been on the biology of depression, we're learning that in fact biology plays a much lesser role than previously thought and what we're learning is that it's social relationships that play a much bigger role than previously thought. And so I'm shining the spotlight on the social side of depression. I'm making the point in many different ways that the quality of your relationships makes a big difference in the quality of your mood. Dr. Yapko, can you tell us about the rates of depression? Are those um, increasing or spreading around the world? They are. The World Health Organization is the international watchdog of health issues around the world and their data are very clear that from culture to culture, country to country, the rates of depression are in fact increasing. And so I think that gives us an opportunity to ask some questions. How does culture affect depression? How does socialization affect depression? And the fact that depression differs so dramatically in rate and quality from culture to culture tells us that socialization, the patterns that we learn through our interactions with others plays a much greater role than we've previously thought. Well, can you tell me a little bit about that? How does depression spread from person to person? Well, I've been addressing the bigger cultural issue, but if we bring it down to the level of interaction, individual interaction, whether it's interactions with your family, inter interactions with your colleagues at work, interactions with people, wherever people gather, well, you know how mood spreads. One person can walk into a room and instantly they spread rainbows and sunshine and inside of five minutes everybody's holding hands and singing kumbaya. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people that walk into a room and instantly just drain the energy right out of it and turn it into a black hole. So at the simplest level, the fact that people's mood really is a contagion, a social contagion, not a viral or a bacterial one, but a social one. And that's what I explore in this book. How does one person spread to another through their own mood, through their outlook, through the things they say? How does it spread from one person to another? And I'm particularly interested in the quality of interaction between parents and children. And that is probably the single greatest transmission factor, the single greatest contagion. We know, for example, that the child of a depressed parent is anywhere from three to six times more likely to become depressed than the child of a non-depressed parent. So that interaction in particular is probably the primary vehicle of contagion. Will you talk about parents transmitting this to their kids and putting their kids at risk then? What can parents do to make that not happen, to help their kids not be depressed? Well, I describe quite a few things that parents can do in the book, but just to give a quick answer to that, certainly the first thing is parents even realizing that they have this kind of influence. Very often, parents appear to be absolutely oblivious to the fact that their kids are paying attention to how they think and how they cope and modeling their problem-solving styles. And these are, in fact, the things that increase risk. So being able to teach kids how to think about problems and not only how to think about them but how to actively solve them so that any parent would learn for example that when their child comes home from school and they're upset because Billy wouldn't play with me today nobody likes me the wary parent would know to challenge that you know if Billy doesn't like you that doesn't mean nobody likes you and really teaching children to think in much more specific terms and also how to be more proactive in shaping their own environment. Very important skills. And are these the skills that you talk about in depression is contagious, uh, the, the approach for helping people get over depression? Yes, certainly one of the things that we've learned, we as a mental health profession have learned, is that the therapy approaches that have the greatest efficiency, the highest treatment success rates, all emphasize teaching skills. And so I am very pleased with the fact that Depression is Contagious is a very practical book that provides lots of skill building opportunities. 
there are two very specific kinds of exercises in the book. One is called Pause and Reflect, where I encourage people to adopt a perspective that will be helpful to them in problem solving. And then the other kind is called Learn by Doing, a very structured guide to here is a way to learn a very specific skill that will be helpful to you to learn. And so it is a very practical book, and I think that readers will find it helpful in that way. Do you address antidepressant medications in your approach? I do. By talking about the fact that biology has been overestimated, what we've learned in studying the antidepressants and their effects now for more than two decades is that the merits of antidepressants have really been exaggerated by good marketing. What good science has shown us is that the medications aren't nearly as strong, aren't nearly as valuable as previously assumed. And that recognizing that medications cannot do certain things that only psychotherapy can do. No amount of medication is going to build a support network for you. No amount of medication is going to teach you to be a better problem solver. No amount of medication is going to build coping skills for you. And so taking antidepressant medications is a reasonable alternative. I'm not against them. But what I am saying is they're not enough in and of themselves. And so the importance of being able to recognize and acquire the social skills that can help people feel more connected and bring out the best parts of themselves in their relationships with others is very important. And that's what I emphasize in the book. You mentioned the support network. Yes. What can people do, family members, uh, friends, when they have somebody in their lives that um, are, is depressed and they want to get them help and this person doesn't want the help? It's a tough question. There's no way to force treatment on someone except under the most extreme circumstances. But I think it's very important for family members and friends to appreciate there's nobody suffering more than this person. They're not happy. They feel pretty miserable. And so offering support is a valuable thing to do offering them information, helping them understand that their hopelessness and helplessness that prevents them from seeking help isn't real. It's a perspective. And that the good information is available that highlights treatment works, treatment works well. And so there are some pretty good and compelling reasons to want to help people get help. Let me ask you one last question. I'll be rather blunt. Mm -hmm. Why should people buy this book? Well, as I've alluded to, education is power. There's lots of evidence to show that the more information people have about depression, the better their rate of recovery, the better their quality of recovery. And this book is filled with information and filled with perspective that is current and realistic and balanced. And then the second part of it is, here is a book that is very practical. This is something that is going to teach people techniques they can actually use. It empowers people to go out and live their lives in ways that work. And so I think that readers will find this a very helpful book, a very practical book, and that's why I'm happy to recommend that they read it. Thank you so much, Dr. Yapko. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.